Welcome home. Thank you. It's good to be home. You came home right when there's a power outage. Yes, I tend to bring bad weather with me, so I'm really sorry to everybody in Spokane. That was probably my fault. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you're, you were staying with your mom. Tell me about like when you came in and just what was happening in the city. Uh, well, we came in and I kind of got a little bit of a clue right before we got here. My mom said, I think it's going to be cold. And then it rained that first night. And then that first night was the night we woke up and it might have well been December. So uh, then the power went out and uh, but Avista got it back on. So thank you. Yes. Good. <laughs> so you spoke yesterday mm -hmm. at your alma mater. Tell me about that. You know, it's always really fun going back. And I think the experience is probably the same for all of us when we go back to where we came from and the roots, because inside we're still the same people, right? Yeah. And we still have all the same hopes and ambitions and doubts and fears and the emotions of going back to your own school. It's like, you know, to me, I just have to pinch myself that I'm not still one of the students sitting on the bleachers. Um, but I also know that for me, when I was sitting on the bleachers, all of my dreams seemed so far away. And so whatever I can do to try to reach out to those students and make them realize that the world really is within their grasp, like they really can go do it. Like that's the message I really want to get across to them. And it's just so special for me to be able to share that with, with schools that I went to. Awesome. So uh, any like kind of funny questions that kids asked? Um, you know, we get, we get all sorts of fun questions. Of course, everybody wants to know, you know, uh, how we eat in space or what are the fun things that we do in space or, you know, how we use the restroom in space. You know, the, those are all kind of the fun questions. Um, uh, I did tell a funny story about the first time I tried to take a picture of Spokane and I wasn't used to how fast we go in the space station. This is the first week I was up there. And I was looking down telling my crewmate, I'm trying to take a picture of Spokane. And he said, well, is it in Minnesota? And he said, because that's where we are. And I was like, oh my goodness, we were just over Seattle three minutes ago and now we're over Minnesota. So I had to get used to it a little bit, but I did get some good shots of Spokane that I shared. Oh, good. What, what was the most surprising thing on the space station? You know, a lot of people ask us how our perspective changes on the space station. And I think it's a, such a deeply personal question. It's so different for everybody. And I think for me personally, what was amazing was, um, you know, the distance and being off of the earth and being able to physically look back at our environment it was one thing. But what really struck me and what I feel like I'm taking away from it is working with people. We worked with people from all over the world. My life was literally dependent on people from other cultures, other countries, lived on the other side of the world that I'd never met, yet my life was in their hands. And, and I'm sitting here today. So everybody did their jobs well. And everybody that I talked to and everybody that I work with was there to try to make my life a little bit easier and I tried to make their life a little bit easier. And what we can accomplish when we wake up in the morning and just try to do the right thing, try to make life easier for somebody else, it really is incredible. That is the strength of our, the space program, is the international cooperation. And to me, it's so humbling. And so when I come back, that's another thing I talked to the kids in Spokane about was like, listen, it's not just what you do, but it's how you do it. What kind of teammate are you? What kind of friend are you? What kind of person are you? If everybody was like you, would the world be a better place? So that's the message I really wanted to get across from. That's really what I came back from after that, from my mission. Along those same lines, and you've kind of touched on it, so it's a bit redundant, but, but is there, do you have this kind of different perspective now? You know what I feel like I came back with was, was first of all, how exciting exploration is. It, we really worked on the edge of what humans are capable of. We worked on the International Space Station. We lived for, I lived for six and a half months in a space station which is in an environment that humans are not supposed to exist in. Yet there we are living and working and learning and developing new technologies for Earth. So that was an amazing perspective and just the excitement of how much more we can do. Um, I think that was kind of the biggest thing for me to take it was just working with other people, accomplishing this amazing mission, and then coming back here and really wanting to spread the mission. Like, I feel so connected to everybody on Earth now. Um, I, kind of, I told this other funny story that when I got back, it was like, it was like I was visiting this planet from another planet, and all of my, all of my 39 years of experience that I had before my flight were gone, and I was looking at everything with fresh eyes. And I distinctly remember the first day that I was allowed to drive again, I went out and I stopped at a coffee shop and I was walking into the coffee shop and this person passed me and I was still not used to just passing random people. It was like something I was really aware of and I was so happy to see her and I <laughs> smiled and I looked and, and she didn't even say hi and I remember standing there for a minute kind of in shock and, and thinking like what, she didn't, she didn't even say hi, like that's so weird, you know, and, and, 
it was just these little interactions that I was really aware of and, and I don't know, so hopefully maybe what I can spread is just like, hey, we're all people, we're all just on here, you know, on this spaceship Earth trying to do the right thing, you know, and we're all in it together and, and we really, I feel very a familial connection with every human I meet now. Interesting. Does the Earth seem smaller to you now? The Earth does seem smaller to me and I think we traveled so much in preparation for this flight and we interacted with people all around the Earth on a daily basis, and we saw 90% of the Earth every single day. We were going over 17,000 miles an hour. We did 16 orbits every single day. Every 45 minutes, there was a sunrise or a sunset. Uh, you know, we were, we were around the Earth very quickly. We saw the auroras in Antarctica, and then 20 minutes later, you're looking over Australia and Japan. And, and so you do realize how interconnected we all are. Mm -hmm. and from where we were in the space station looking back at Earth, it was actually hard to comprehend that, hey, on this little globe that you see is, is everything that's ever meant anything to you. And it's everything that's ever meant anything to everybody is on that Earth and history and your family and your ancestors. And it's just so amazing to, to watch, to see it with your eyeballs. But, and, you, and I felt really connected and close to Earth. Like when I was out on the, spa, on the spacewalk, people say, well, do you, did you feel so far away? And to me, it was just the opposite. Because when I looked at Earth, it was right there. Mm -hmm. We're holding onto the space station, I could see Earth. But when I looked the other direction, it was the most infinite forever that you can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. And I felt very connected to Earth by this invisible thing called gravity, luckily, that holds <laughs> up. Uh, you know, and so it, it, I felt like an ownership over the Earth you know, and, and really a, a part of it. And I, I wish everybody could have that experience. I know you were obviously working very hard, but will any vacation ever compare? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I've never really been a risk taker. Um, you know, in our job, it looks very risky, yeah. but actually we're professional risk mitigators. And so I don't even have a desire to go on roller coasters anymore right now. But. Um, you know, I, I really enjoy just the peace and the tranquility and, of nature. So that's, when I've come back, you know, I, I want to go walking out in the trees. I could just sit there and look at in the backyard. And, you know, and Spokane is such a great area for that. I mean, is there a city as beautiful as Spokane? Uh, you know, of course I'm biased, but, uh, you know, it's so nice to be here just in nature and just the stillness and the calmness uh, on earth is something I just really appreciate. Is there, I know you've been busy here, but is there anywhere in particular you look forward to visiting or going out to dinner or? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. The, a lot of astronauts say, okay, what's, what became, what, what got put on your bucket list after you saw it from space? Because for everybody, something, something catches their eye for whatever reason on Earth that they had never seen or never been to before. And a lot of astronauts after their flight travel all over the world to go just look at this one island they saw or to go look at this one crater they saw. And for me, it's actually not that far. One of my favorite things to photograph and to see and to fly over that just gave me chills was the Great Lakes. They are absolutely beautiful from space, and I've never been there. And so I, that is definitely on my short list of places that I want to go soon. Um, you know, it's really incredible when we'd fly up from Houston um, in the space station. You know, obviously we're going pretty quickly, but as soon as you get over Houston, you can look up, and it's just like the Great Lakes are, are it's there. You know, there's these huge finger lakes, and they're, you know, the the northern half they are just snow capped and and absolutely beautiful, and then the bottom half, you know, you can see Chicago and Detroit and these other cities mm -hmm. in there, and um, but. They are so beautiful from space, and I can't wait to go there in person. What, I'm sure a very common question. Everybody wants to know what is it, what's the hardest thing to get used to when you're back? So this is, uh, the, the whole Earth is very complicated. It's very busy, and it's, there's a lot of energy, and there's a lot to do every day. It's very stimulating. And so I think for me, the, the, the hardest thing to get used to, you know, we were gone for six and a half months. We were living in a very small area. Uh, I had two crewmates for, for half that time, and then there were, I had five crewmates, so a total of six people. Uh, so when you get back to Earth, the first thing I noticed was how busy everything was. You know, there's cars everywhere, there's information everywhere, there's, there's phones and emails and calls and, and people talking to you, and you know, it's just, it's this sensory overload that we have all really gotten used to. Yeah. Um, I got used to that relatively quickly. Uh, physical adjustments were probably the longest lingering effects on the body. Mm -hmm. uh, microgravity is a very harsh environment uh, for your body. Um, and actually microgravity itself isn't, but the adjustment between gravity and microgravity is, is hard on your body. Um, and so when you come back from space after there's really been no forces on your body, it's very, it's kind of easier in space once your body adjusts that 
you know, it, you don't get sore muscles, you don't get hot spots when you sleep, you know, your back stretches out. You, you know, I grew two inches on, in orbit. Um, and then that all went away within about two days. And so coming back to gravity and having the weight on your legs. Um, so it probably took about three months for me to be able to run without feeling like I my, there was weights on my legs. Uh, so wow. you can really feel, you know, because your, your muscles aren't used to having to actually lift your legs up. Mm -hmm. um, now in the immediate time, uh, and this is one of the considerations when we start doing Mars missions, is we're going to fly, fly crews for a really long time to get there, uh, and then they're going to perform uh, spacewalks on the, super, on the surface of the Mars. Well, one of the effects that we have when we come back to Earth is we have orthostatic issues. So it's like our, our systems forget how to pump blood back up to our heads. So if I had landed and just started running right away, I probably would have passed out because all the blood would have pooled in my legs. And so the, developing the countermeasures uh, for those physical effects for long duration planetary missions uh, is one of the big things that uh, NASA and others are trying to figure out right now. Interesting. Mm. Um, we have that video of you getting out of the space station. Do you remember what was going through your mind? After we landed? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the, so the landing itself was the best roller coaster ride I have ever been on in my life. Uh, it's, uh, I heard that it was a mix of the, you know, the spinny cups at the fair, uh, a roller coaster, and sitting inside of a washing machine. And <laughs> it, it didn't disappoint. It was incredible. Um, and so part of the excitement of when I got out was just what we had just been through for the last 30 minutes. Um, you know, and, and trying to wrap your mind around the fact that we were just a few minutes ago, we were floating in outer space. We just came through the plasma layer. We just slammed on the brakes and slowed our vehicle down from 17,000 miles an hour to sitting on the surface of the earth in gravity. These parachutes deployed perfectly after being up in the harsh environment of space for seven mm -hmm. months. You know, and then all of a sudden it was the first time that we had seen people other than each other for so long. And it was just such an overwhelming experience that, that hey, we just did this thing. We just did this mission. And we did it together. I was with David, who's a Canadian. I was with Oleg, a, a Russian. And the three of us just did this together. Mm -hmm. And it was just so fun to come back to Earth because it just felt like home. You know, it looked like I was in a field in the middle of nowhere, but there were people and faces that I felt were like my family. And I was on this <laughs> planet that I now felt like was mine. And it was just, it was so exciting. Was there anything scary about coming back? You know, I didn't feel any fear coming back. Um, same with launch. I think um, I think I had a lot of years as a test pilot before that, mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, you, you really are able to just kind of let go of any of those emotions and just focus on what you're doing. Um, coming back, the the vehicle, the way that it's designed, you have very little interaction with it, and so unlike launch, where we were constantly monitoring multiple systems and, and interacting with the systems and really having to follow our, our procedures, once you come back, and especially once you're under the parachute, you're really just waiting. And so you have kind of this 15 minutes before you land after the parachute had opened to really just take it all in and just sit there and, and, and look around that vehicle and just know like none of us know when we're going to go back, if we're going to go back. And, and you're just looking, you're just trying to carve in your mind every memory, every vision, what, the, what it looks like out the window, um, you know, what it feels like to sit in those seats. Um, so it, it's a pretty incredible experience. What's next for you? Uh, so right now, um, uh, I'm still in my post-flight recovery period and then I, How long is that? Uh, they give about six months and that includes a lot of uh, different outreach, medical experiments. Uh, a lot of the things that we did on orbit are still going on here on Earth so I've still worked with a lot of the scientists to finish up some of the experiments and, and testing that they did uh, on my body and on, on, uh, um, on some other aspects on, of flight. Um, so our office right now, it's actually a really exciting and really busy time at NASA. So we are looking at launching uh, commercial crew vehicles up to the space station, mm -hmm. SpaceX and Boeing, uh, within the next six months. And so we're helping their, their crews now. Uh, we are usually either in, in the mode of us getting ready to fly or we're getting each other ready to fly. Mm -hmm. So I'll immediately go back into a support role and get uh, my crewmates uh, up, up and to have their space adventures. Um, and then the uh, NASA is, we're going to put boots on the moon uh, by 2024 with the Artemis program. And so uh, a large chunk of us are going to be working on the test and development for those programs. Might there be another space trip for you or is it kind of like we need to rotate? <laughs> At both. Uh, so we need to rotate, but you know, with, with all the, the folks that are going to be flying up to the space station on the commercial crew vehicles, mm -hmm. the seats that we're going to get with the Artemis program on Orion, and then we're still going to be flying on the Russian Soyuz. We're going to be trading them seats so that every time that a, a commercial crew vehicle launches, we're still going to be launching with our Russian crewmates on there and we're still going to be launching on the Soyuz to keep that international cooperation uh, going. 
And so uh, there's plenty of seats out there, um, but uh, you know there's usually a lull of three to five years between flights. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm gonna look forward to some of the downtime, enjoying planet Earth and um, helping my crewmates get up there. Uh, right now, as we speak, uh, two of my closest friends are out on a spacewalk. Uh, and so, and, and uh, I've got uh, six friends up there on Space Station right now. It's so incredible to watch other people, uh, you know, achieve their dreams and get to experience it. Um, incredibly jealous sitting down there and looking up at them, uh, but, uh, but definitely looking forward to my next flight. Speaking of dreams, I wish I could remember because I've, I've recounted something you told me like many times and now I just, I just lost it, but it was some, it was about dreams and it was it was you it was something to the effect of waking up every morning and thinking about that dream and going for it do you remember yes, i mean it's, there's, it was you it was you <laughs> who said it but so you know a, a dream most of us have have dreams that are pretty lofty and they're so far from where we're starting out you know and so it can seem overwhelming and so um, you know, it's kind of moving the mountain, you know, one teaspoon at a time, but it's waking up every morning if you have a dream and just doing one thing in that day to get you a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. And the culmination of all those small actions really can take you to incredible places. For me, I, I still am just breathless when I go back to my old high school, to my old grade schools here in Spokane and realize like, wow, all those little decisions actually did get to me to where I am, you know, and, and, and so that's why I try to communicate to those kids is just, just wake up, you can change the course of your life with small decisions every single day and just, just start doing it, start working toward it. That's it. That's what you told me, <laughs> yes. Um, being here at YWCA, why is this an important event for you to attend? Well, the YWCA is an incredible organization that does so many things for our, for our society and, for, um, and recognizing the achievement of, of uh, accomplished women from every facet of life. And so, um, the, the thing I'm most excited about today is just meeting the other nine awardees. Um, I've read all of their bios, I've read about them, I can't wait to shake their hands. Uh, you know, it, it really speaks to the power of what passionate women can do who chase their dreams, no matter what that passion is. You know, we have, we have here, we have professors, we have police officers, we have judges, you know, and so it's whatever your passion is, whatever gift you've been given, you know, share it with the world despite any doubts, despite any barriers you think are there. If you think there's barriers, then take them down. You know, and, and I'm really excited to meet the other nine women and just to be included in a group of such accomplished women is, is really humbling to me.